Dear friends, do you delight? Often when non-Christians talk about the Christian faith, they use words like judgment or rules. Christians are often characterized as people who have a long list of things they shouldn't do and many view Christianity as a harsh religion. Even Christians, those who follow Jesus, even myself, have often limited our faith to a very one-sided thing. We live in the realm of things we shouldn't do, rules and restrictions, a way in which we have to carry ourselves, a way to act. We focus on the sacrifice, obedience, discipline, serving, by the way, all of which are good things, mind you. But we often live having lost the sense of delight in God. We have turned delight into duty. Our faith, rather than being life-giving, joyful, free, hopeful, becomes burdensome and dutiful. I need to pray more. I need to read my Bible more. I skip my quiet time. That's not good. I need to attend one more service or revival meeting. I should listen to more hymns. I need to serve more. I need to give more, and so on and so forth. Again, I'm not criticizing the good desire to strive for holy living, the good desire to live upright, the good intention to give God our very best. But I feel like many of us at times are stuck in this half of our beautiful relationship with God, the duty, and are missing out on the other half, the delight. I'd like to read from Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The word Eden comes from the Hebrew root, which means delight. God literally created a garden in a place called delight, and in this garden, God put every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Eden, or delight, was a perfect paradise of good things for humans to enjoy. Beautiful things to see, wonderful things to eat. God created us to delight in Him and in the beautiful things He gives us. Later on in Genesis 2, 15 through 17, it tells us that the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. There was delight in this garden, and yes, there was duty as well. Humans had to work and could enjoy everything in the garden, but obey God in this one thing, to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I have a few sessions planned where I'm going to talk about Christians and work. But for now, I just want to call out that the work God had humans do in Eden was very different than work after sin came into the world because of disobedience and the fall of humankind. Work was always in God's plan for us. It was never meant to be punishment. Sin made work burdensome and toil for us. So here in the Garden of Eden, in this perfect creation, there was delight and duty both together. Duty without delight becomes nothing more than living like Pharisees in the time of Jesus. Pharisees were religious leaders who took all the joy out of their relationship with God by creating so many rules and restrictions. However, delight without duty is also not representative of our relationship with God. Psalm 37.4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. God doesn't just give His children everything they want. Many things we want are not good for us. This verse is reminding us that to delight in the Lord is enjoying the blessings found in Him, because they are from Him. A person who delights in God has the right desires, or desires that are aligned with God's desires. Or put another way, when we delight in God, He gives us the heart that desires what He wants. Our God is a good God, a loving God, who wants to give good things to His people. He knows that we are the most at peace, the most fulfilled, the most blessed when we delight in Him and the things He gives us. And yes, that means when we are aligned with His holiness, His values, His purpose, and joining Him in the work He is doing in the world. Friends, I hope you are encouraged in your relationship with God, that we can live in the duty and the delight.